When I was uh, traveling in Hong Kong and Taiwan, many people say Singapore is very lucky. When there are some riots in, um, like in Hong Kong or some problem in uh, Indonesia, or people just come over to Singapore. Meet Peter, a Chinese national who has lived in Australia, Italy, France and Hong Kong. And for the past 12 years, he has been residing in Singapore, working as an HR professional. Peter shares whether he faces stereotypes about people from China in Singapore, why it's so much less stressful here compared to Hong Kong and what the hottest industries in the Singapore job market are. I'm Max, let's go! You were off for some time in Hong Kong? Yes. Like recently? Yes, I and was now in you're... Hong Kong uh, like one half a year. Yeah, and now you're coming back yes. to Singapore. Yeah. How, how does it feel to come back to Singapore? I, when you left uh, Singapore, you start to miss a little bit of the um, uh, local flavor, right? For example, yeah. I was um, try to buy the durian in Hong uh -huh. Kong, right? But the durian in Hong Kong was from Thailand, uh -huh. uh, not from Malaysia, right? The, yeah. the flavor is a little bit different. And sometimes you are missing like the La Casa or uh, some of this kind of uh, Chao Guo Tiao, right? I get used to have this local Kopi Tian, uh -huh. right? Uh, Kopi C, Kopi Su Dai, yeah. etc., exactly, right? So, and, and then you, you start to feel uh, a little bit um, kind of belongings to the country. For example, then uh, when I came back from Hong Kong, uh, you start to feel Singapore is much more spacious than Hong Kong. Because Hong Kong, there's a, a lot of mountains, uh -huh. right? The residential area are very concentrated. Yeah. So if you go to the central or Hong Kong Island or the Kowloon or Wan Chai, uh, mm. those areas, right? The residential is very intense, very condensed. Yeah. So it's very convenient, but it's very, very small apartment yeah. compared with Singapore. What are the other like big differences in life in Hong Kong compared to Singapore? I think compared with Hong Kong, I think Singapore is less stressful. Reason being that, okay, first of all, the government provided HDB, right? For sure, Hong Kong, you also have the public housing, but yeah. the percentage of people who can apply public housing are very limited. Uh -huh. You have an income, minimum, maximum income, which is like uh, monthly, like uh, 18,000 or 20,000 mm -hmm. Hong Kong dollars. So which means that the housing pressure mm -hmm. are much less than Hong Kong. Plus, you know, the recent, this kind of uh, Hong Kong riot in 2019, Hong Kong become more and more uh, integrated with China. Right? While Singapore, you can maintain, we can maintain a little bit. We are more independent, can deal with US, China, can balance all the stakeholders. And work culture also a little bit different. Uh, how different? Partially probably because of the weather. The weather? Oh. I think because it, when I was, when I work in Singapore, right? After a lunch, lunch, right? Yeah. Three or 4 p.m., you start to feel hungry. <laughs> you want to eat something. <laughs> and you feel tired right, sometimes, <laughs> right? You don't work until 9, 10 p.m. Some people do, but I think it depends on the industry, maybe. Yeah. But generally, yeah, you mean generally, generally, generally yeah. yes. Uh, yeah. So, for example, in, in the office in, in Singapore, there are always people bring food to the pantry. Yeah. And then you always can eat something or so like a tea break um, or a Friday lunch together. But in Hong Kong, uh, we don't, because everybody was rushing, dabao, take food to eat uh, in the office. Yeah. Uh, and then they have meeting after meeting. I think it's much more the rhythm, the speed, uh, a little bit faster. Yeah, interesting. Like I have some, let's say, friends coming from, like visiting from Thailand uh, to Singapore. Yeah. And they say, oh, the life pace is so fast in Singapore compared to Thailand. But then if you go to Hong Kong, it's even like more faster. It's like, yeah. 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 yeah, I think it's Hong Kong get used to this kind of speed uh, because 100 years with uh, uh, British management, right? Yeah. So, and it was become a financial, was a financial center for many, many years. Yeah. And uh, you know, people get used to working in this speed. So like the last five years, you see like big changes in Hong Kong because of China integration. Yes. It's, it's a different place now compared to like say 10 years ago. Hong Kong, Taiwan, even Singapore, yeah. the different generation have different perspectives mm. on the um, let's say politics, economy, everything, right? Yeah. I think the young people, the middle class, a lot of middle class 
for the children's education or for better life. They just uh, migrate, immigrated to um, UK or Canada, uh, or some came to Singapore. You mean recently? Uh, oh. After 2019. After 2019. Yeah, yeah, there's a s official statistics. Yeah. Because the population reduced like more than 100,000. 1,000. 100,000. 100,000. And it's mainly expats or also like Hong Kongers, like, mi like middle class Hong Kongers? Expats and local Hong Kongers. Local also. I agree. Like, and Singapore is kind of maybe more easier to predict the future. It's like a kind of more stable. So people are here, they feel like, okay, we kind of understand what's going on in Singapore in five years, 10 years, 15 years. Yeah. yeah I, think that's, uh, I think when I was uh, traveling in Hong Kong and Taiwan, many people say Singapore is very lucky because when we are in the like the center of the Southeast Asia, right? Yeah. When there are some like riots in um, like in Hong Kong or some problem in uh, Indonesia, or people just come over to Singapore, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Or expat, they also move, uh, yeah. you know, for different reasons. So you you call Singapore your home now? Yes, um, because my wife and my son, my son grown up from here, yeah. uh, and I live here. Right? I've been yeah. away from China for like. 12 years, right? Yeah. Um, so it's very hard now to define where is your, let's say, you, you have your, let's say, identity, which is, uh, your, I'm Chinese, as an ethnicity point of view, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have what passport you hold, right? Then you could hold a Chinese passport, American passport, Singapore passport, but that's your choice, right? And, and then where you live, well, that's your home, right? Mm. So I, I call Singapore home because I live here, right? But maybe many years later, you may live in another country. Then you can call another country home, right? So when you are moving around too many places, your attachment to one country is discounted. Mm. I can say this way. Yeah, I think it can be case by case. Let's say you live, you always been staying in one place in one country, and then you're like, you feel like very patriotic about the country. Yeah. But then sometimes you kind of go away, then you live somewhere else. But then you kind of start to appreciate your home country. And then it's like, oh, that's my identity. I'm a person of the world, but still, that's my identity. So you kind of start like thinking through, like reflecting, okay, who am I? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. There's no perfect country to live in the world. Yeah. Right? But especially now. Especially now, yeah. Geopolitical and safety, yeah. everything, right? But I do, there's uh, everybody agrees that in Singapore, you're uh, very safe. The safety uh, is very guaranteed. Uh, the kids can go around without too much worry, right? You have the, the freedom of information, the government is very efficient, uh, and then you have general inclusive culture. So in Singapore, you don't feel that you are like a foreigner. With all of these, I mean, I cannot complain too much. I talked to like few Chinese uh, guests on my channel. And some of them mentioned that there are like some stereotypes about Chinese from China and Singapore. Do you think you, you can feel it here? For me, I, I don't feel these um, stereotypes uh, because first of all, um, people always say, oh, when you speak English, they're always trying to figure out where you come from. Mm. Oh, are you from Korea or Japan? Or uh, When you speak Mandarin, they know in, immediately you are from China, right? Yeah. But when you speak English, uh, they just try to figure out where mm. you come from. Mm. But they, oh, you, you sound you sounds like not uh, from local uh, because you are not speaking English, right? Yeah. I don't there's a bad intention or I, I don't feel bad because you, you, you should have... Um, I'm aware of the stereotypes, but every individual is different, right? So one of the things is that you, as a mainland Chinese, you also can change people's stereotypes, mm. all right? So in this regard, so uh, just be yourself and be a, be a good citizen, be a good professional, be a good uh, person, Yeah. right? So you used to, to live where, in Paris? I you... lived in Paris, I lived in Italy, uh, both places, Milan and Paris. Uh -huh. yeah. How was life there? I think there's a, a few assumptions in my mind before I go, right? Mm. So I was always think, thinking, because uh, in Asia, we, we think we are very hardworking, especially Chinese, always get things done very quickly, very fast. Yeah. I thought the European is not hardworking. 
that's a wrong stereotype. Mm. I see a lot of uh, French people, Italian people work very late. Uh, some work until 9, 8, they come very early, uh, they are very committed on, on, on jobs, uh, for sure. They also take one month vacation in uh, August, August or yeah. in July, right? Yeah. But some of the management, they also work. So I, I think that's, that's um, one thing I changed my, uh, my, my thinking. The other thing is that uh, I always think, oh, in Europe, you're, every day in Paris, someone going to protest, right? Uh, oh, there's a, um, the train stopped because there's a strike. Mm. Oh, Lufthansa is on strike. But I always think, oh, this is problems. This is, a, this is a, uh, you know, it's always an issue, right? Yeah. To me. But actually, it is an issue, but it always can be resolved. Because when there's a strike on the train, they always have another automatic train or another bus or a way to solve the problems. Yeah. So um, it, it's become a, a kind of a way of living. Now people need to express. They have the right to, to protest. They have the right to, uh, to stop the streets uh, when they properly inform the police, right? And yeah. the police go with them. And then the people always say, oh, in Europe it's very dangerous. I, even some of my Singaporean friends, I, I, they, they always I lost my wallet, I lost my bag. I, you know, actually, for me, uh, is because you get used to in Singapore, you leave your mobile phone, you leave your wallet, and nobody touch it, right? But for sure, you cannot do that. You cannot blame uh, France yeah. or you know, Italy or Europe. Yeah. So you have to change your mindset. Yeah. You have to do, don't show off um, with uh, those uh, expensive things. Put a lot of cash on your pocket, right? That's also another very interesting thing. Yeah. Besides all of this, I think every country are quite similar. I think it's because the news exaggerate things normally. And yeah, if you exactly. live in one place, you see something bad happening in another place, and you think, oh, that's the only, only thing that's happening there. Yeah. It's the only bad things are, are yeah. there. Yeah. Because the good things, they don't create traffic, they don't create as much attention as the bad news. Yeah, and exactly. so that's why you think, oh, they, yeah. they're doing really bad. I'll tell you another example. I mean, all the uh, French Italian people will say, oh, the Chinese are so rich because they come to buy Louis Vuitton, Prada, all the Cartier, uh, like 10 bags or, or maybe 15 with long queue, right? Yeah. But that's, that's not the real China yeah. average. There's uh, still like 600 million Chinese people who are living with a monthly income below 1,000 Chinese yuan, yeah. right? So how can they afford to buy? So it's only maybe 1% or less than 1% of people yeah. who afford to buy those kind of things, right? It's not every Chinese are rich man. That's, that's a stereotype. How's your social circle look like here? I do have a lot of uh, Singaporean friends. So basically a lot of uh, friends because of colleagues. So you work with colleagues and then you become friends. And then I also have some private hobbies. For example, I was sitting in a choir Mm. I, I go sing in the Esplanade uh, theaters. Um, I go, so you have a circle of local friends. So I think basically, I've ninety-five percent are local Singaporeans, mm. and maybe uh, some from China, and maybe some expats. You mentioned that you sing in the choir, um, but your main job is like you in HR for yes. many years, right? Yes. But I saw your YouTube channel, so basically you look very professional, like singing on the stage. No. Um, so it's, it's your hobby or it, at some point you switch your career? No, it's my hobby. Yeah. I think the good things in Singapore is that all kinds of hobbies, you can find your network. Uh. Because uh, I think the government have this community club, right? They have all different programs like dancing, singing, karaoke, uh, I mean, uh, sports, sailing, surfing, you know, everything, mm. photographing. Um, you can always find your social network, yeah. right? And you can practice it. A lot of people uh, in Singapore, they like to sing the Italian opera mm. <laughs> or the, oh, or the fr or French or German or Russian uh, mm. opera as well. Uh, you mean in our choir, we do sing the uh, song from Russia as well. Mm. Uh, German songs, uh, French songs, uh, British songs. There's a lot of activities ongoing. Yeah. yeah, this is where I get to know a lot of local Singaporeans. Mm, yeah, through there. What's the age group normally? And um, there are different age groups. There's uh, 
in the 60s, 70s. Mm. Uh, we call it, uh, let's say, um, Jiang Guo Yidai. I, I don't know how do you call it. And then uh, pioneer generation, okay. <laughs> and then we have uh, then the mid 40s, 50s. We have the younger generations who are in 30s or so. Yeah. Speaking about the job market now, what's the current trend? Maybe like just a big picture for the industries. I know the tech is struggling now. Yeah. Um, well, maybe you just give me the like the, the perspective, the big picture of what's going on with the job market in Singapore. In Singapore, the fintech is still very hot. Uh -huh. uh, financial yeah. uh, market. Uh, so they're hiring. Uh, I think they're hiring. Yeah. Uh, and then let's say the biology, you know, the ph pharmacy, mm -hmm. uh, they are still um, doing good. Semiconductor, for sure, we have challenges. Yeah. But I still think it's okay, right? But even though. Because we have the AI, right? Yeah. AI come in. So I think it's a good industry. Uh, but then the traditional industry, like the construction, uh, the oil and gas, I think still, I mean, still one of the core of the Singapore, right? Yeah. So you need people to build the, the road, the houses, the, the port. You know, we are going to ship the port from here to Jurong. Um, the government is going to build a, a kind of corridor in the East Coast. I mean, the government have a lot of uh, projects mm -hmm. ongoing. I mean, I can see over the past 10 years, a mm. lot of things coming up. Mm. Mm. What are the, the industries are not doing that well? For sure, I think manufacturing was not doing uh, uh, very well because a lot of them moved to uh, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, right? Indonesia. Uh, that's. Uh, one industry. I think the other industry we have a lot of challenge due to the e-commerce, right? Mm. Because now you do shopping online. So those stores in the shopping mall, I think they are have a lot of challenges. Yeah. Because the rental is getting higher and higher. It's not coming yet, but I, I saw already in China happening. Mm. Because a lot of stores have to close because the rental is too high and the people's shopping behavior changed. You buy from Lazada, you buy from uh, uh, let's say Amazon, right? Yeah. So you, you, you don't go to the store, right? People deliver for you. So that's um, a, a big threat. Personally, I believe IT industry is up and down. Mm. Now it's uh, because during COVID, yeah. everybody was buying computer, buying everything. So it's a booming, mm. uh, including the video calls, right? The IT industry was doing very well, but now it's just going down, right? But you never know, maybe a few years, when, when as we start to use the AI, right? Yeah. Uh, more and more people use AI, I think it's going to well, go back again. Mm. I'm confident for IT industry. What's your principles about money? A lot of people say, oh, Chinese are very good at uh, making money because they work hard, yeah. they're smart, they always see opportunities, yeah. and they always do trade-ins. Right? When the Chinese go everywhere in the world, they become rich very quickly because they uh, make money, they, don't, they save money, Mm. and they don't spend. Right? So it, it, it's true, it's not like false stereotype. It's actually kind of, kind of true. Uh, it is a stereotype, yes, but it's also, we have to look at different generations. Yeah. But the younger generation of Chinese is not like that. Uh -huh. So if you go to those people born in 1990s, yeah. and uh, let's say the, after uh, year 2000, because they, they raised up in a um, very uh, middle-class family or rich family, right? When they go overseas, they, they spend, they use credit card, they, they always are debt. Yeah. So it is different, yeah. My view of uh, money is that money is to serve the purpose of your life. So you always have to ask yourself, mm. what is my purpose of life? What do I want to do? What do I want to achieve before I die? And because in the end, we always say that the best thing is that you finish your, all your money before you die. But nobody can do that. <laughs> Either you, you have too much money left or you own some money. Right? I think that my point of view is, is like this. You need to have certain, in Singapore, it's a very expensive city, country. And you need a certain income. You need to work hard to make a good living. Hey, wait. Do you invest? I do. I mean, I believe that to obtain the real freedom in life. You have to learn only two things. One is how to make money. Another one is how to invest. And there is an app that can help you with that. It's called Mungu and it's all-in-one trading platform and your financial companion. So Mungu offers a commission-free trading 
and super user-friendly app, which is great, especially if you're a newbie in this world. But also it has all the tools for seasoned traders. Opening an account is easy and no minimum deposit is required, which is awesome. Plus, what I personally like about Lumu, they have a lot of educational materials like webinars, tutorials, demo accounts that you can play with. And it's actually perfect if you are just starting your trading journey. Moreover, I arranged with the Mumu team that you will get a 20 Singapore dollar cash coupon if you deposit 100 SGD. So that's a 20% bonus right away. Not bad. Hmm? To claim this offer, use the link in the description. You seem a very positive person, uh, but do you have any regrets in life? If I maybe regret, I, I, I think maybe I, sh um, I, I should have more children. Uh, uh, how many you have? Only one. Mm. But that's because of China one child policy. Ah, okay. Right? As that situation, you, um, you cannot choose. Yeah. You, know, you can choose to have two, but it's, uh, you have a lot of other pro yeah. problems at that time. Yeah, when I was young, I, I want to go to the music school, but you, you, you could do that, and then you could then you go to other school, universities, you learn mm. other things. Uh, maybe your life could be very different, right? Uh, maybe I could be a professional musician, yeah. uh, right? I cannot say regret, it's just different options in life. Yeah. And it's like, you never know what would happen, yeah? If yeah. you take this path. Yeah. There is a movie, I don't remember how it's called, but it was like, what if the life kind of split into two? Yeah. And say, there, there was a girl, so she's, I think she saw like the, the boy that she liked. And then there are two realities. One, she was in the metro, in like an MRT in the carriage. And then the door shut, and so she never see this boy again. Oh. And then an other reality, she was able to like live off the train. Yeah. And like they start dating, so it's like two lives. At the, at the end, actually, they kind of the, these two split lives they get together, like the same outcome. Yeah. But that's like that's interesting to discuss. Like these small things, they can lead you to different, very different, like eventual results in life. Yeah. You see? yeah. I think the aspiration and motivation is very important. Mm. You know, there's always opportunities if you are really want to go for that. But a lot of people just say, okay, I'm happy with whatever I have. Uh, I don't want to have, uh, uh, let's say, risk. I don't want to travel in a dangerous place. I don't want to work uh, extra hours. I don't want to do this, do that, right? So it's your option, your choice. Right? Mm. But if you have a right motivation and right aspiration and you go for it, you are sooner or later you will be there, I believe. For sure, there's difficulties, there's obstacles you have to overcome, right? Yeah. But I always believe uh, this is very important. Mm. I think for our generation, uh, I'm, let's say uh, y, uh, uh, X generation, right? When I was born in China, China was very poor, right? I can see the poor side of China and the hardship of life. Yeah. I can also see the modern life of China. I can see the poor countries, how people live and work, and the rich country, how people work. So you formulate a kind of, uh, let's say, a, a motivation. And, and all this kind of experience in the past make you a different kind of aspiration because you, you always want to progress. You always want to do better. You always want to be better than your father's generation, your grandfather's generation, mm. right? This is where the society progress. I completely like resonate with that. Yeah. Kind of you appreciate the, the good life. If you saw the bad life, the poor life, you appreciate the good life. Yes. Yeah, same for me. I was born in 1984. My childhood was in the 90s, beginning of 90s in Russia. It was not the, the best time for Russia, I would say. Yeah. And I remember that we kind of, we spent time on the construction side outside of the, our house. There was like construction side, there was a lot of holes, like some, some stuff that you're not supposed, as a kid, not supposed to play with. But that was our childhood. Yeah. So now like living in Singapore, but basically like overall living a kind of okay life, I kind of know that's my privilege. So I came from not like super poor background, but I know how it, how it is to be not very well off, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think because uh, the experience like me, because we, we, we um, come from a poor life, like say middle class life now, we are more grateful. Uh, we appreciate what we have today, right? I'm not uh, greedy, I'm not, I always appreciate uh, what we have and very grateful 
for all the opportunities for all the people who have helped me, who supported me uh, mm -hmm. in my life journey. Yeah. So that's important. Yeah. What's the meaning of life for you? The meaning of life is, um, I think one is to achievement. Um, you need to achieve something in your life, right? And second thing is that you need to support others. I have been supported by so many people to become a good person. I can I should <laughs> say right. So then you have to do something in return, right? You need to support others who need help. This kind of uh, giving and um, let's say reward back to the society is basically the um, uh, the principle of, uh, of of the human life. I'm not a Christian or, or Catholic, right? Um, but I think that God do exist. Mm. Yeah.